Good morning, everyone. I want to welcome everyone to our first service of 2021. As I was thinking about it this morning, we've had some amazing um, challenges and disappointments in 2020, but we are here and we are expecting that God is going to continue to show himself faithful and true and merciful and powerful. And so I just want to open up our first service of 2021 with a little bit of prayer and pray with expectation that God is going to do something amazing in each of our lives and as a family together. Bow with me for a word of prayer, please. Father in heaven, we are just so grateful to see this day. We are so grateful to begin the new year with our church family, Father. We are praying for the blessings of heaven to pour down on each and every family, Father. For those of us that are still reeling from some of the disappointments and grief and pain of 2020, God, would you remind us that you are the comforter, you are the lifter of our heads, you are the alpha and omega, and we are indeed safe in our Father's arms. Prepare each and every heart for worship as we gather together this morning to lift up your name. You said where two or more are present, you will be in the midst, Father. Well, would you come by here and anoint your family to praise your name this morning? We give you all honor and praise in Jesus' name. And all God's children said, amen. 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 Let's prepare to worship, family. Good morning, good morning, good morning. God bless you, South Bay family and friends. Can you believe that we are in the first Sunday of 2021? The Lord has been good to us. He is worthy to be praised this morning. So I want you to put your hands together right where you are while we just tell him, Lord, we praise you. Hallelujah for all that he's done for us. Come on, let's do it together. Come on, let's sing. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord, we praise you. joy that came my way he took away my crown all those things that had me bound I thought about all those times when I was walking around in the days but today I stand before you with nothing but praise oh Lord, oh, Lord we praise we you praise we come to give you glory oh, Lord, we praise we you praise things that had me bound I thought about all those times when I was walking around in the days but today I stand before you with nothing but praise oh Lord, oh Lord we praise we you praise we come to give you glory oh Lord, we praise we praise because you. you're holy It's your turn to sing it at home. You can sing it right there. Can't nobody hear you. So if you're off a little bit, it's okay this day. But we want you to have the opportunity to sing your own praise song to the Lord. 
So just for the next few minutes as the musicians play, I want you to lift your voice and tell the Lord right here. Oh, Lord, we praise you. Come on, sing it. Oh, Lord, we praise you. Oh. to be here this first Sunday in 2021 we made it God saw us through he kept us he preserved us he protected us and by his grace and his mercy we are here this, mo this morning to celebrate to worship to honor him so I invite you just to quiet yourself down and just settle in as we tell him Lord you deserve the glory he deserves the honor. Let's worship together. Come on, Tim.
there's no one like you in all the earth. And so it's our honor and privilege to stand before you and to lift our hands and to worship you. Lord, you have been so very good to us. Lord, you've seen us through and you've allowed us to see a brand new year, oh God. And we give you all praise, all glory. You alone deserve the glory. And so right where we are, we lift our hands and we lift our hearts. And we give you worship this morning, God. We celebrate your faithfulness, Father. And we thank you for your love. Thank you for all you do for each one of us, God. Bless every home that's here this morning. Let your favor rest upon us all through this year, God. And we'll be careful to give you the honor and the praise. And all God's people said amen and amen. God bless you, family. Let's enjoy the rest of our service. Good morning and welcome, South Bay family and friends. Uh, at this time, we would like to acknowledge and welcome any first-time visitors. So if you're out there, give us a little wave so we can see who you are. Uh, there's also a button on our SOBCC.org webpage that says, I'm new. If you don't mind, after the service, please go and select the button and follow the instructions so that we can get to know you better. At this time, I'd like to introduce Sister Phyllis Scott, who's going to lead us in our congregational prayer. Thank you, Brother Maurice. Let's just close ourselves in, brothers and sisters, and, and just go into the presence of God. Father, we do come into your presence now, God, and we thank you, Lord, that you have invited us to come so we can come boldly. We thank you, Lord God, that we come and we worship you, God. We praise you because truly, Lord, you do deserve the glory. You deserve all of the glory, all of the honor, and all of the praise, and you are great, Lord God. You are great, Father God, and so we're looking to you, Father God. You are the Lord God, our peace. You are the Lord God, our hope. You are the Lord God, our joy, and we thank you, Lord, that you are our provider, you are our healer, you are our deliverer. You make ways for us out of no way, God, and we thank you. We thank you, Lord God, as we go into this new year, as we have entered in, Father God, that we enter in looking to you, the author, the finisher of our faith, looking to you to lead, guide, and direct, looking to you, Lord God, to open up our hearts and our minds that we might hear from you and that we might walk the walk that you would have us walk in, that we might, Lord God, speak words of love, words of encouragement, words of joy, words of peace, words of hope, God, that we might minister to those, Lord God, that do not know you, that we might bring encouragement to those that do know you, Lord God. 2020 was a year of difficulty, Lord God, but we thank you. <laughs> Father God, because you led us the entire time, you never left us. But Father God, there were losses. So I pray God for those families, Lord God, that lost loved ones in 2020. I pray God for those families, Lord God, that suffered hardship and suffered financial setbacks, Lord God, that, that suffered violence in their lives, Lord God. And But Father God, we yet, we are looking to you. You told us in your word to not, Remember the former things because you're going to do a new thing. So we thank you for the new things that you will be doing in 2021 in our lives. We thank you, Lord God, that we look to you, God. We thank you, God, that you're almighty. We thank you, God, that you are all powerful. We thank you, Lord God, that you are moving by your spirit in our homes and in our families and in our church, God. We thank you, God, that you are moving by your spirit in our nation, Lord God. And we lift up those that are in places of authority, God. We ask, God, that you would lead, God, and direct, God. We pray, God, for our nation, Lord God, that is teetering, Lord God. And we ask, God, that you would give us a spirit of unity. God, that that spirit of hatred and violence and, and malice would be bound in the name of Jesus and the spirit of love and joy and unity would be released, God. We just thank you, Lord God, that we are your children, your sons and your daughters. You have filled us with your spirit. You have filled us with your love. We thank you, God, that we walk in forgiveness. And we thank you, Lord God, that, that 
every day, God, every single day, your word has promised that we would have brand new mercies every morning. Your word has promised us that you are faithful to us. Your word has promised us that you love us with a love that is from everlasting to everlasting. Your word has promised us that when the floods come, they would not overtake us, that, that the fire would not overtake us, Lord God, that no weapon formed against us. So we just pray, God, that no matter what, God, that we remember each and every day how powerful you are, that we would remain connected to you, God, that every day that we would be clothed with the armor of God, every day that we would put on the Lord Jesus Christ, that our, our loins would be girt about with truth, that we would have on the helmet of salvation and the breastplate of righteousness, that our shoe, feet would be shod with that preparation of gospel of peace, and that we would have the sword of the spirit, which is your word, God, and that shield of faith, God. So we thank you, Father God, that despite what is going on around us, that we will walk by faith and not by sight, God, that, that we would just look to you always, God, for each and everything. Bless every home that is represented on this line today, God. Bless and restore, God. We thank you, Lord, Father God, for reconciliation. We thank you, Father God, for unity. Lord God, we just thank you and we praise you that you restore God unto us, God. That which the enemy stole or even that, Lord God, which we let go without a battle, God. We will be strong in you, Father, and in the power of your might. So we say thank you, Lord, today. We say thank you, move by your spirit, anoint our speaker, God, that, that the anointing of God would just rain down upon us that we would be refreshed in your anointing, in your presence, God, there is fullness of joy. So we thank you, Lord God, that, that we desire to walk with you. We desire to talk with you. We desire to be in your presence, Lord God. And we just give you praise. Have your way today in the service, God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. Thank you so much, Sister Phyllis and family. Good morning and happy, happy new year. It was so wonderful spending uh, so much time with you a couple days ago as we entered into the new year together. And here we are on the break of a new horizon, a new year that is only days old. You know, it was a year ago this time that we had no idea what 2020 was going to bring. We had waited so expectantly for the year that sounded so cool to say, 2020. But little did we know, right? And the same is true right now. We have no idea what the future holds, but as the saying goes, we know who holds the future. Friends, as we enter into this new year together, I believe that it's not only a new year, not only a new day, not only a new season, but as, as Sister Phyllis prophetically said in her, her prayer, God is doing something new. God is doing something new. And for us to be ready for it, I believe that God is inviting us to do three things, that there are three invitations that God has for us today that could change everything in 2021. Family, if you would please open your Bibles, we will be reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 43, and we'll be reading verses 18 through 21. Not using slides today, so I encourage you to, to grab your Bible, use your devices. In fact, we're going to be a little interactive later, so make sure you're, you're comfortable, but not too comfortable that you fall asleep on me, because God is doing a new thing, and we want to hear his invitation this morning. Again, Isaiah 43, verses 18 through 21. Hear the word of the Lord. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. 
The wild animals honor me, the jackals and the owls, because I provide water in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland to give drink to my people, my chosen, the people I formed for myself, that they may proclaim my praise. Heavenly Father, as we unpack your word today, Lord, it is not by accident that anyone listening is on this call. Lord, we know that you have given us another year, that your mercies are indeed new every morning, and that you are active in our lives. And so, Lord, as we come before your word today, I ask, Lord, that you would open our hearts and our minds to hear the message that you have for each one of us, the customized message that you have for us personally, as well as for us as your church family. Lord, we are open. We are eager to hear. We ask your blessing on our time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Family, I believe the, the invitations that God has given us in, in for 2021, that the first one is that we put away the past. Put away the past. Now, before we dig into the passage, let me give a little bit of context of, of what Isaiah is sharing with the children of Israel in this text. Prophet Isaiah is speaking to, to God's children who have been in exile. They've been exiled by the Babylonians for nearly 70 years. God is telling them that their time of captivity is coming to an end because God is going to deliver them. It was a promise that they could count on because God had delivered them before. A few verses earlier in our very same chapter, God reminds them of this starting in verse 14. God says, this is what the Lord says your redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. For your sake, I will send to Babylon and bring down as fugitives all the Babylonians in the ships in which they took pride. I am the Lord, your Holy One, Israel's creator, your king. This is what the Lord says. He who made a way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters, who drew out the chariots and horses, the army and reinforcements together. And there they lay there, never to rise again, extinguished, snuffed out like a wick. Well, friends, you probably recognize that God is, is referring to the Exodus when he delivered his children through the Red Sea from Egypt. And I bet these memories of the Exodus story brought smiles to many of faces who were hearing the words of Isaiah. These were the good old days. And as they heard Isaiah's words, some were probably nodding and, and smiling with eyes closed as they recalled the story that was passed down from generation to generation. This was God at work in all of his power and glory. They recalled the, the 10 plagues that he used to befuddle and humble the Egyptians until Pharaoh couldn't take it anymore when, when his firstborn son died in the, in the last plague. And that resulted in, in Pharaoh just kicking the entire nation out of the country. And once they left, Pharaoh had a change of heart. In fact, his heart hardened and he, and he sent the army after them to bring them back. And we know that the entire army met their harrowing demise in the Red Sea. God sure enough did deliver. This was the beloved story of the, the children of Israel that was told over and over and over again. In fact, it's, it's repeatedly found throughout the Bible, which is why the very next verse, our opening verse for our text today, can feel like an, an ice cold jolt. Verse 18 says, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. Wait, wait a minute, what? But God, you just took us down memory lane and now you're telling us to forget the past? Our very identity is embedded in that story. What are you talking about, God? And I wonder if perhaps that was part of the problem that, that their identity was so embedded in that past story that, that, that God is, is shaking something up. 
Have you ever met someone whose entire existence and outlook on life is, is, is facing backwards? It's all about the, the way things were, the, the good old days, their, their heyday moments. Often this is cliche is, is summed up in that high school or college sports, sports star who has an entire wall, maybe even an entire room of their hotshot moments and their clippings and their trophies and their entire identity is based on who they were, not who they are today. I wonder if perhaps that was in part what God was getting at in this text here when he's speaking through Isaiah. Maybe. Well, let's keep going forward in our text. In verse 18, a New International Version says, forget the former things, do not dwell on the past. In the English Standard Version, it's translated, remember not the former things. The Berean Study Bible says, pay no attention to the things of old. Well, why is God saying that? Well, well the verse, it, the answer to that is actually found in the next verse, verse 19. It says, see, I am doing a new thing. In other words, I'm doing something different from what I did in the past. I actually love how the New Living Translation puts it. It's after recounting the, the Exodus story in Isaiah, the New Living Translation says, but forget all that. It is nothing compared to what I am going to do. You got that? It is nothing compared to what I am going to do. So my friends, here's the first invitation for us as we enter into 2021. It is to receive the new thing that God is doing. And to do that, we sometimes need to put away the past. Well, what does that mean exactly to put away the past? Well, I wanna briefly suggest two areas of our past that we may need to put away. First area that we may need to, to put away is our past fumbles, failures, and fears. We may need to first put away our fumbles, our failures, and our fears. For example, some of us need to stop beating ourselves up for things that we feel we messed up. We are replaying it over and over in our minds. Some of us need to stop dwelling on things that we wish were different than they really are. Some of us need to stop replaying how we should have zigged instead of zagged or we wouldn't be in the mess we're in right now. Some of us need to stop saying, I tried that once and it will never work, I'm not trying it again. Some of us need to allow God to help us forgive someone or forgive ourselves even. And some of us need to stop the broken record of if only dot, dot, dot. Brothers and sisters, too often our past experiences or our habits or our attitudes, even our thoughts can keep us locked behind bars like a prison. I find this true in my own life sometimes. Like there's, there's times where my thoughts take me down a road and, and in those times I can hear my mother's voice in my ears and I can hear her saying, Tammy, those are old tapes, let it go. Whatever may be in your past, whatever prison may be holding you of regrets or guilt or disappointments or fears, Friends, I believe God is inviting us to let it go because he wants to do something new in our lives. The truth is God can redeem anything. We have no idea how God may use those experiences that, that, that we're allowing to, to, to keep us in prison with hopelessness or feelings of failure. We have no idea how God may wanna use those very experiences to transform us this year. We have no idea how he can renew our mind and transform our negative thoughts and, and open up a whole new world for us this year. 
We have no idea how just opening our hands and releasing the past to God may be exactly the invitation that God is waiting for. It starts with us. Something that God wants to do and new and wonderful in 2021, but, but he's waiting for us to let it go. Second area of our past that we may need to put away is the focus on our past successes and victories. We may be living in those good old days, just like the, the sports person we talked about er earlier. And inadvertently in, in staying focused on, on that area, those victories and those successes, we can inadvertently put God in a box. We can find ourselves doing the same things the same old way, expecting God will do and respond the same way as he did before. Often we, we stick to these ways because they're familiar and they're comfortable and we think we know, well, this is how God works. It may never occur to us that God has something new in mind. What are the seven deadliest words for a church? We've never done it that way before. The seven deadliest ways for a church. They're the seven deadliest ways for ourselves too. Similar to that football star, we, we talked about our past victories with God and what he's done in our life can, can, can help us lead us to be existing on fumes of past testimony that lead to spiritual suffocation. We're missing the fresh air that God is doing something new right now, today. So just like we can be prisoners of a negative past, we can be prisoners of a positive past and both become like stale fruit. They may look okay for a while, but they, but they lose their freshness, they lose their potency and they lead to decay. Friends, living in the past can be a danger for every area of our lives, our relationships, our marriages, our jobs, our, our mission and ministry as our church, our, even our relationship with God. If we are stuck in the past, whether it's positive or negative, and we dwell there, we don't allow God to do something new. But brothers and sisters, before I leave this point, let me underscore this. I believe God is saying, forget the past so we don't get stuck there, but we are never to forget the person. We can forget the method of how God did it, but we never want to forget the miracle worker. The point is not to dwell on the particulars, expecting God will, will come and show up and do the same thing, but to recognize that we serve a God who is a creator, an artist, an author, and God loves doing new things. But before he can do that, I believe God is inviting us to put the past behind us, whatever that may mean for you, a habit, a way of thinking, an expectation, a tradition. In fact, brothers and sisters, I'd like us just to take a moment right now, just to pause wherever you are and allow the Holy Spirit to bring to your mind whatever bubbles up when God says, forget all that from the past. I'm doing something new. Whatever is bubbling up for you right now, when you hear God say, forget all that from your past, I'm doing something new. Hold that thought. Let it come into your spirit. In fact, I wanna encourage you to actually hold your hands out with me right now. Start with them in little fists like this, representing the prison of your past. And as you hold your hands up, just open them slowly and release before God from your past whatever is stirring in your spirit right now. Whether God is bringing to mind positive things or negative things, let it go. Let's make room. Let us release our past to our God. 
so he can do something new. Amen. Amen. The next invitation as we begin 2021, the second one out of three. I believe that God is inviting us to perceive what God is doing in the present. Let us continue in verse 19. It says, see, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? God is doing something new in the present and he challenges us to see it, perceive it, recognize it right now in this moment, in the present. It's one thing to say that God is doing something new, but it's something else entirely to be aware of it and to see it. Our text says, now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? That says to me that it is visible somehow, and that if we are looking, we can see it. Depending on your Bible of choice, the Hebrew word here is translated, see, behold, look, watch. All of these words are marker words used to to call our attention, to declare a change of scene. It says that something is happening and we should be paying attention to it. You know, as I thought about this word to behold, look, watch, see, I had a a visual come into my mind, kind of probably like a a sitcom. And, And it's like, we're all looking in one direction. All the heads are going this way. And God is over here saying, hey, I'm over here. Look at me. I'm doing something. As we learn from this text that whatever God is doing has already started. The NIV says, now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? The New Living Translation says, see, I have already begun. Do you not see it? The Good News Translation says, it's happening already and you can see it now. And the Lexham English Bible says, now it sprouts. Do you not perceive it? You know, I actually love that version the best because I love the the idea of sprouts. I think of these little shoots breaking through the ground that you almost can miss them if you're not paying attention. According to vocabulary.com, a sprout is a small growth on a plant, a little bud. You know how often we walk by plants in the springtime and those little buds are actually there, but we don't even see them until they're in full bloom, but they're there. Perceiving the new thing that God is doing requires that we pay attention and that we have spiritual eyes to see. God is doing something new. And apparently it is evident if we are looking for it. Even if that sprout is a seedling right now, God's word says we can see it if we're looking for it. I was reminded of a young teenager who is so excited when he sees those first facial hairs of a mustache. Nobody else can see them, but he's going to point out, yeah, they're right here. See it? I've got the hair. But he's been waiting and watching and expecting and looking because he knows it's coming. Well, I feel it's the same for this new thing that God is doing. When we are looking and paying attention, we see. You know, I agree with so many other spiritual leaders that this is a unique moment in history. Friends, we are living in unprecedented times to be sure, but it is a unique moment in history and God is doing something new. With the vaccine, it appears we are finally making some headway with this pandemic. God is doing something new. Social scientists of all faith and secularists are saying our post-pandemic world is changed forever. God is doing something new. Researchers, church researchers are saying that even when we get back into the church building, 
Church as we know it will never be as it was. God is doing something new. And friends and family, we know here at South Bay, we're in a transition of our own. God is doing something new. All around us, God is doing something new. Do we see it? We need spiritual eyes like never before so we can watch and perceive and align to these new things that God is doing in and all around us. So the question may become, so how do we develop spiritual eyes? Well, I will tell you that this will be a big part of next Sunday's message as we enter into our 21 days of prayer and fasting, a big part of those days will be, how do we see what God is doing? But today we can start by asking God to help us see what he's doing and what he wants us to see. It's not about what we want to see. It's not about what we are planning and setting goals to see. It's not about what we expect to see. It's not even about what we hope to see. We can express all those things before God. There's nothing wrong with planning and setting goals and having expectations and having hopes. We can give all of those things to God. But if we are to embrace the new thing that God is doing, it requires paying attention. It requires having open eyes and open minds and open hearts to perceive the new thing that God is doing. We need to be open to the possibility that while we're looking stage left, God may enter stage right. That what God is doing may be totally unexpected. In verse 19 of our passage, God says, I am making a way in the desert and streams in the wasteland. How many of you can look back over your life and recognize all the ways that God has surprised you. I'm a living testimony right here, right now, that I never expected to be doing what I'm doing right this minute and sharing God's word with you. God is a God of surprises. And you can't get much more unpredictable than God himself showing up as a little baby with humble means, birthed by a teenage mother in the middle of nowhere. God loves to do new things. He's a God of surprise. And the question then becomes, are we open to what God may be doing? Are we open to see what God has already started? Are we ready to perceive what's new? A few moments ago, you opened and closed your hands to release your past. Now I wanna invite you again to just put your hands hands out with me open because you've released your past. But now I want to invite you to take all of your hopes and your dreams and your desires and your resolutions and your expectations for 2021 and offer them to God, but hold them loosely with your fingers spread because it very may be that all of those things you're holding is exactly what God wants to do. But it also may be that God is saying, I see these things, but I got a new thing in mind. I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Don't you perceive it? I'm making a way in the desert and I'm making streams in the wasteland. Sisters and brothers, we don't know what's coming this year. It may involve everything that you're desiring, but I guarantee you there is nothing better than being aligned with God's best for you in 2021. And that may be an entirely new thing. One more invitation I believe God has for us in 2021. So far, God has invited us to put away the past, to perceive what he is doing in the present. And the last invitation for us from our text is for us to proclaim his praise. 
Now, this is not a blind or obligatory praise because we, we're supposed to or ought to or should praise God, should praise God. Let's look at our passage one more time and dig just a bit deeper. We're told not to dwell on the past because God is doing a new thing. You got that. But, but what is this new thing he's doing in our text? What did the original hearers understand? Well, it says that he's making a way in the desert and streams in the wasteland. But what is he doing that for? Well, remember this passage was, was originally to the, the children of Israel who were waiting for freedom from Babylonian captivity. They're about to be freed just like God freed his people from the Egyptians, only this time he's going to lead them not through a sea. He's doing something new. He's bringing salvation to them in a completely new way. He's making a way through the desert, a way out of no way, if you will, because we know God personally to be a way maker. He says he's going to provide streams in the wasteland. That is, he's going to make life where there is no life, refreshment and rejuvenation and salvation where death resi resides in wasteland. Now, let me take a very mini side road here. As I thought about this part of the passage, I, I thought about how many of us have areas in our life right now where we need a way maker, where we need God to make a way out of no way. I thought that there are some of us who right now our lives feel like or aspects of our lives feel like a wasteland. We need God to refresh and rejuvenate and bring life in 2021. But sisters and brothers, I can tell you, this is the God we serve. And I wanna encourage you this morning to, to continue praying and to keep your eyes open because you never know what God is doing. And I do believe with all my heart that God is doing something. But back to our text. It goes on to say, because of the sustenance and the water God provides in this desert wasteland, the animals, the jackals, the owls all honor God because of what God's done. And God not only provides for those animals, but he says he provides drink for his chosen people. Those very same, in the very same west, wastelands of death, God has provided for his people that he formed and he loves and calls by name. And here comes the, the big why of it all in verse 21, God's end game, God's big reveal. Why does he make a way in the desert and streams in the wasteland? Why does he provide drink for the animals and, and his chosen ones? And God answers this himself. And he says, so they may proclaim my praise brothers and sisters, as sons and daughters of God, we too are God's chosen people. Have you ever stopped to think about how everything God does is for us, but actually nothing is about us at the same time? It's like a big cosmic oxymoron. To be sure God's plans and purposes are for our good, he loves us lavishly and, and is so encompassing in his love. He provides for us and cares for us and guides us and is merciful towards us and forgives us. He saves us not only so that we could be with him forever, but there's new mercies every day and he's saving us every day. He's saving us from ourselves. Why? So we may proclaim his praises. Friends, we were made to be witnesses to the goodness of God. And the natural response to God's goodness toward us is praise. That's why the Bible says if we don't praise God, the rocks will cry out. Because everything God does, his very nature evokes praise. When we really stop to ponder the goodness of God, God's heart of love is in everything he does. And praise is the natural response. C.S. Lewis said, praise is the consummation of joy. When we are filled with the joy of the Lord, 
not only for what God has done for us, but what he is doing right now and what he will do and all he is in our lives. When we hold that deep in our spirit, praise just has to come out. We can't help it. So my friends, as we start this new year together, I want to invite us to hear the invitations that God is offering to us. Let us open our hands and put the past behind us. Let us extend our hands to receive and perceive what God is doing in the present. And let us lift up holy hands and proclaim his praises. Because family, God is doing something new and he is always worthy of our praise. He is always worthy of our praise. You know, I wanted to give us some time. I wanted to give us some time just to hear what God may be saying to you, but more so just to give you time to praise our God. So I wanna share a video with you. And after the video, we will go into a time of communion, but, but I don't want you just to, 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 to enter into this video like you are watching a TV show. I want you to, to embrace this video if it is your prayer. It's a powerful worship song. The words are powerful. The image is powerful. If you can turn up your computer and just let the, let the praises fill your room wherever you are, I want to invite you just to have a time to proclaim his praise. Because when we do that, everything else will fall in line. We will see what God wants us to see. We will perceive what he was do is doing in the present. We can let the past drop off when we praise our Lord. Let's praise God together. <laughs> God of creation, there at the start, before the beginning of time. With no point of reference, you spoke to the dark and fleshed out the wonder of life. Yeah. 
Amen. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor Tammy, for that wonderful word. Uh, brothers and sisters, as we conclude our service today, I uh, pray that we will take that song uh, and take the word from our message this morning, that there are things that we need to be looking for that are new and things that we need to be leaving behind in 2021. So I want to encourage you, uh, go to our website. This would be an awesome time for you to maybe start the year by sending some prayer requests so that your church family can pray with you. So if you head to our website, there's two things I want to make sure you're aware of. Up at the top, you'll see our prayer uh, button. And there is a team of people ready to pray, ready to stand with you and beside you uh, as we take a new year and new expectations and new possibilities into 2021. And also, if this is your first time with us or you're new to South Bay, there's a button also on our website that says, I'm new. We'd love for you to click on that so that we could get a chance to know you, uh, pray with you, and just welcome you into the part of the South Bay family. So I'm going to close this out for this afternoon and pray that God's blessings are going before you, coming behind and him you in on the sides so bow with your head bow your head with me if you would please father in heaven we thank you for your word we thank you for your truth we thank you that you have demonstrated that you are the same faithful god yesterday today and all of our tomorrows are in your hand so father uh, i pray that the word that was spoken the worship that was lifted up all that was said and done our time of coming to the table of grace reminds us Father, that you are our protector, our provider. So we come into 2021 hoping to perceive the new things that you are doing, God. Give us new eyes and new ears that we can proclaim the kingdom of God until you call us home. Father, we love you and we give you all honor and glory in Jesus' name. And all God's children said, amen.